Dandy Walker malformation, commonly abbreviated as DWM, is an early embryonic finding with impairments in the formation of the cerebellum and surrounding structures in the posterior cranial fossa. There can be multiple risk factors implicated in the development of DWM. For example, advanced maternal age substantially increases the risk of posterior fossa malformations. Similarly, multiple pregnancies as elucidated by the obstetric history of the first patient may have influenced DWM genesis through the correlation of grand multiparity and risk of congenital defects. Two of the case studies mentioned a maternal history of systemic disorders, as in case 5 with familial hypercholesterolemia and case 6 with gestational diabetes mellitus. This alludes to a possible interplay between these risk factors and the pathogenesis of DWM. Although there are no established patterns of inheritance for DWM, autosomal recessive and X-linked inheritance are usually suggested. Case 4 exemplifies this theory as an outcome of marriage among relatives, which increases the chances of autosomal recessive disorders and hence DWM. The typical anatomical presentation of DWM includes hypoplasia of the cerebellum and vermis, as indicated in most cases. Such anomalies typically manifest with abnormal motor movements, impaired higher motor functions, and intellect. There are four differential diagnoses to DWM. These include arachnoid cyst, Blake's pouch cyst, Joubert anomaly, and Arnold Chiari malformation. Case 7 was the only case suspected of having both a posterior fossa arachnoid cyst and DWM. This shows that it is possible for two differential diagnoses to appear simultaneously in one patient. As evident from the mentioned cases, the prognosis of these fetuses is very poor because of severe hypoplasia of the vermis and enlargement of the fourth ventricle. In such cases, the risk of fetal distress is very high, leading to an increased perinatal mortality rate. The fetuses who survive are likely to have severe motor, sensory, and cognitive impairments later in life. All of this can be emotionally debilitating to the parents and the family as a whole. Therefore, the treating physicians and radiologists require a thorough assessment with ultrasound and MRI as core radiological modalities to establish an early and accurate diagnosis and prognosis of DWM. This will aid in the prompt management and early developmental rehabilitation of these neonates.